It was one of my friends who encountered this community of seaweed farmers in a mangrove area 500 miles south of Manila. Where children were basically swimming when they were going to school. That story really touched me. So I updated my Facebook status and one of my friends challenged me. It made me think we should do something about it. So we started a mini fundraising campaign and we raised enough money to buy them a boat. But uh, one thing that we didn't realize, in the afternoon when it's low tide, a boat is uh, kind of useless. You can't just give whatever you think they need. You have to really find out what their needs are. So it's really a learning process and it's becoming sort of a relationship. <laughs> Social media is helping us connect with places that face challenges that we've never even heard of. Now we're looking at a holistic way on how to help them. By helping the high school graduates secure some scholarships from the State College of Marine Science and Technology to get out of poverty and improve the quality of life in the community. By building them a boat, we've never realized that it would create a ripple effect to understand each other and build a relationship with them. Thank you for uh, having me today. Um, I brought this uh, replica of a yellow boat. Um, in, in gratitude to the TEDx community for allowing us to share our story. Um, so I'm just going to put it somewhere here. That boat brought me here. Of course, not literally. <laughs> um, before we start, can I ask everyone to stand up? Can we all stand up, please? Yeah. Um, I'm going to count one to three. Uh, and when I say three, can we all jump? <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, one, two, three, jump! <laughs> you may now sit down. <laughs> when I share the yellow boat story, I always ask the audience to jump because it symbolizes that you're now on board the yellow boat go go. There are no accidents in life. Do you know who said that? It was Master Ubwe, the turtle Kufu master in the movie called Kufu Panda. That's one of my favorite quotes in life, not only because Kufu Panda is one of my favorite movies, but a lot of my friends also say, I look like Ko. And it is my belief either that it is not an accident that we are here today. So thank you for being here. As you've seen in the video earlier, my story sort of started with a Facebook status. And uh, that's what I'm going to share with you today. By the way, before I continue, may I ask how many of you are on Facebook? 
Oh wow, it's almost 90% of the room. I'll, I'm gonna add you all later. <laughs> no, I promise. I'm gonna add you all later. <laughs> uh, while, I'm, while I'm telling my story, I want you to think about this. How important is an education to you? Would you walk 10 minutes to get to school? Would you walk two hours? How about five hours? Would you walk two kilometers to get to school? How about five kilometers? Some of these stories we've heard before, but it was a story in the south of the Philippines in a mangrove village called Tayaglea that truly touched me. Two years ago, I was in a blogger summit in Sambuanga City in the Philippines. Uh, almost like this one. During the sidelines of that summit, a volunteer came up to me and told me Najra's story, Najra and her friends. And uh, during the presidential campaign in 2010, so this group of volunteers went to Leaglea and they encountered a group of kids who were swimming. They were in a pump boat. And the kids, the way they described it to me was the kids were carrying a plastic bag and they were swimming with the right hand. And when they got a bit tired, they would transfer the plastic bag to the next hand, to the right hand, and then swim with the left hand. And they didn't know how to react then because, you know, the children, Najra and their friends were even talking to each other. They were joking. And when he, when that volunteer shared the story with me, it just, you know, disturbed me. Going back to Manila, the Philippine capital that night, I still couldn't shake off the story. You know, we often hear of kids who skip school to go swimming. I hope none of you have done that, by the way. But here were kids who swim so that they can go to school. So I couldn't sleep that night, and I decided I just shared my, on my Facebook status. And so I went to sleep. The next day, I was surprised. A lot of my friends began commenting, how can I help, how can I help, how can I help? And one of them immediately donated a certain amount of money and that started a mini fundraising campaign on Facebook. Friends reposted the status, friends of friends reposted uh, the fundraising campaign and within one week, we had $1,600. But you have to remember, up until this point, I haven't seen the community. And I was like, I was nervous. We, have, we had money. But I didn't know if the story was true. So I called another friend who's now my co-founder. His name is Anton Lee, and told him, Doc, uh, can you, you know, uh, you remember the story that I told you about? Can you just go to the school and really verify it because we sort of have some money? And so he went to the school, he got it verified, and we decided to build them a yellow boat, a yellow school boat. As you say here, Pila <laughs> Kashti. And uh, today, the Yellow Boat of Hope Foundation is present in 11 communities in the Philippines. Because the Philippines is composed of 7,107 islands. So we realize the situation of the kids in Leaglea is not unique to that particular place. It made me realize that a single Facebook status can make a difference. But it made me wonder, was it really just the Facebook status? And I realized it was not. Beyond all the talk about likes and followers on social media, the real story of social media is a human one. Facebook and all the other social networks run on human emotions. Love, sadness, anger, compassion, and hope. You see this with, when people band together to help victims of natural disaster. You've seen this with families staying connected online, and even couples finding love over the internet. In our case, for example, I realized that it wasn't just the Facebook status that made it successful. I called on friends, I texted friends, I met with donors, and that's what connected the whole story together. 
people connected with the story, my friends connected with it, and it connected with their friends. It was these human connections that made the campaign <coughs> successful. The story of Dajra gave us hope. When we were naming the very first vote that we were giving, we asked the community, what does the vote uh, what does the boat mean to you? And they all answered, Pagong Pag-asa, which means new boat. And I remember when I heard first heard the story, that is what it meant to me. You know, imagine kids go swimming so they can go to school. It's an amazing, you know, it's an amazing story by itself. Which brings me to my last point. Hope, H-O-P-E. I truly believe that hope can change the world. And I also believe that each one of us, each one of you who are in this room now, can be a beacon of hope for the world. And so I came up with my own theory of hope. And H, it starts with H. It's all about harnessing your potential. It's about finding what you're passionate about in life. You know, even after 27 months into the project, it still keeps me awake at night, wondering about the possibilities. And it still wakes me up in the morning, excited to go out and make them happen. O is about opening your heart and your mind. When I first shared that Facebook status, I never really imagined that it would transform into a thriving national movement, helping 11 communities in the Philippines and inspiring people across the globe. Life is all about learning. But unfortunately, so many of us, after we leave formal school, we stop learning, we stop listening, and we stop paying attention to opportunities from lear to learn from others. That is what open is all, is all about. You know, being open to failures and mistakes. And my co-founder, Dr. Anton Dick, also shared with me, can anyone guess what the other meaning of O is? It also means opening your wallet. <laughs> when you're passionate about something, most of the time, I'm sure you're familiar with it, you know, when you want something to get done, you'll have to spend you spend some money, you know, you have to spend some time and effort to make it happen. Which brings me to one of the most important parts, where H-O-P is very important. It's about perspiration. It's about taking action. So it's not just about finding what you're passionate about. You should go out there and do it. When you want to help other people, you have to get their hands dirty. Only by doing so can we truly learn in life. Which brings me to the last uh, aspect of hope, which is very important as well. E is about empowering others. And even when you think of leadership across the globe, that is what is missing. If we want social change projects, if we want initiatives, projects, uh, like some, what some of the other speakers will tell about later, we have to empower the next generation. In the Yellow Boat Project, for example, we built, we're not just building school boats, we're building classrooms, schools, we've even built, we've just finished building a mosque, and uh, we're also helping them in their livelihood. So imagine what the power of one, as Sonia mentioned, can do. Before I end, I want to share with you the operating principle that we have in the Yellow Boat Project. The great thing a little lamp can do, which the big sign cannot do, is give light at night. It shows us that no one is superior by size, but by purpose. If we cannot do great things, we can surely do small things in a great way because little things make a big difference.